In the not-so-distant future, somewhere in time and space, Batman and the League were cloned to save a poorly dressed alien race. And yes, it's Mystery Science Batman 3000. Hey, what's happening gamers? I'm K-Wing, and it's time to learn stuff while punching crime in the face. Today's lore is Batman 3000, in case you haven't figured it out. Or as my wife calls him, Vegas Batman. I mean, seriously, just look at this guy. What is up with that? Future fashion, am I right? So what is this Batman all about? Well, he comes to a life thanks to a woman named Ariel Masters, along with the Wonder Twins. Well, that's Sentry's version of the Wonder Twins. Not Wonder Twin powers activate Xana and Jaina. There's no ice and water friendliness here. So the Justice League is reborn to save the universe of tomorrow. Also, it's very interesting to note that uh, technically they work for Cadmus now, which is odd considering all the crazy stuff Cadmus did to them in the past. you think they would be a little hesitant to work for the bad guy. But, of course, Amanda Waller isn't around anymore, so Cadmus is better now, right? Right? Wrong. Also, another important trait is most of the team is missing important powers that readers learn over time. Take Superman. Superman has no heat vision or ice breath. Also, he is constantly reminded by his teammates, and even bad guys, that you can't fly anymore. You can just jump really, really high. So why is that? Well, Superman's new body is not of Kryptonian descent, meaning he's just a normal dude who's been given, like, super DNA. As for Hal Jordan, he has no ring at all, and he reminds the reader constantly with his whining. Barry's power is uh, similar to Wally West from the 80s, and it's possibly killing him, or at least burning him severely. He even mentions how the friction or aura and the speed force is missing, so he feels really weird running about, but he notices that he's a lot faster than he used to be. Aside from the uh, power shift, all their personalities are completely different altogether. Barry Allen is now a pessimist and not the happy-go-lucky speedster that he used to be, Hal Jordan is less of a wise cracking uh, jerk, and he's more of an optimist now, so he took with that whole hippie New Age-ness. Also, he is the only living Green Lantern, yet he has no ring, and when he finds out that the Green Lanterns became bad guys, he's like, I didn't see that coming. Wonder Woman is mostly the same, though thinks 90% like an Amazon, which, in the future world, that's kind of a problem. She also really enjoys war now, and has none of the knowledge that she learned from Man's World, and that is a yikes moment. Superman is back, but only remembers his exploits and is lacking humility. So he has no teachings of the Kents or his wife Lois behind him. He's just Mr. Super Ego that loves talking in the third person, and I kid you not. He loves to remind Bruce Wayne all the time when he saves him that, hey, Superman, just saved you, or Superman isn't afraid of anyone alive or dead. Superman's got this, because Superman is the most amazing hero ever. And yes, it's pretty funny. Then you have, of course, Batman, and Bruce is like a Superman in a sense that he's just Batman. He isn't driven by his family's tragic passing, he has no rules about killing, and to add insult to injury, he hates Superman. So the bromance in the future is dead. Just like Clark, his personality is incredibly different. Think like a really sarcastic Tim Drake with a chip on his shoulder. Then, for good measure, mix in the arrogance and rage of Jason Todd, and boom, you have Batman 3000. He's a jerk, he knows he's a jerk, and he doesn't care. He also believes he's the galaxy's only hope of keeping the League in check, and hopefully saving everyone. Also, he doesn't look at problems calmly anymore, nor does he lead the team very well. He's uh, really not very good at uh, controlling them, and everyone acts independently, so it's not really a team. Uh, case in point, when Bruce is trying to uh, have the team do something on their first mission, uh, Barry is like, hey, that's great, but uh, next time, can I have a turn as leader? And Batman's just like, <laughs> no. One thing Batman says constantly is that he wishes he could find some kryptonite to deal with a cape nut job. And uh, unlike the other League members, Batman actually remembers his death and doesn't plan on dying like that ever again. He may also remember how they failed to save the world, but he's not sharing with anybody. Kind of keeps that to himself, but he is learning to brood a little bit. 
Which, you know, you need a brooding Batman in the future, it's good for everybody. For the most part, the comic plays out like a really bad reality show, and it is zany crazy. After each mission, uh, fighting off the Convert, or the Five, or whatever the main baddies are in this era, I forget, each League member is asked questions about, you know, how they did in the field, and how they feel about each other personally. Then they sit in a little room and talk to a camera just like the real world. Except, you know, it's the future. Then, of course, uh, their filmed uh, reactions are sent to the Wonder Twins, and they watch the mission reports and moan, because it's really painful to watch. Uh, during one mission, Superman says that he can fly and destroy the enemy planet with ease, but the Wonder Twins, along with the Justice League, remind him, hey, you can't do that, and yeah. The sister also then forgets to turn off the comm after yelling at Superman and Batman, which is a normal occurrence in the future, and then calls the entire team a disaster and that they're all brain-dead children, which they all happen to hear. Awkward. Lantern then flies them to their next target planet because Barry's stomach can't handle the transverse teleporter thing. It makes him really nauseous. While in orbit, after being briefed by the Wonder Twins, Superman can't take it any longer and he's really tired of being stuck in the bubble with Batman and the rest of the League. Instead of punching Batman in the face, he decides to jump out of the bubble, which is in space, mind you, and he does not have his Kryptonian DNA, and he says this is a job for Superman and leaps out of the bubble and then plummets to his death. Which Batman actually uh, finds kind of funny, so he's savoring the moment, but then he face palms and says, Jordan, just save Clark before he becomes a pancake. And Clark is not too happy about being saved, because he's like, I could totally survive that. I'm, we get it, you're Superman. So they travel to a planet and run into a being called Locus, which is a 19-year-old girl or 1900-year-old girl that's going through puberty. She really likes boys. Also, she has a really crazy power that bends all reality. So yeah, try to think about that if you can. She also has a thing for Green Lantern, even though they've never met, but she thinks Hal Jordan is ridiculously good looking. But Superman interrupts and says, hey, why be with this guy when you can be with me? And she smacks him in the face with like, enough force to kill a normal guy. And Superman's just like, hey, that wasn't cool. I'm Superman. So yeah, you can see this is not the same Superman that you know. Uh, Flash then tries to uh, run around the planet to dizzy Locust based on what Batman said. And then she's like, I know what you're trying to do. And he explodes. So another running gag that you're going to notice with this series is how much Barry Allen dies randomly. Hal Jordan is then shrunk to the size of the Atom by Locust and taken captive because she wants him to be her boyfriend. So I guess there's worse things, but I think being shrunken to the size of uh, Ray Palmer would be kind of bad, you know, especially since you don't have the power to come back. She then sends the three remaining League members to a prison planet. After dispatching of the bad guys, Batman is able to talk some sense into Supes and Wonder Woman, though they end up fighting again based on a remark that Superman said about their past. And lo and behold, they're surrounded by odd frog creatures with lots of guns. And Batman actually says, okay, we surrender. And the two heroes look at Batman like, what did he just say? And Batman's like, we're totally outnumbered. You may be invincible, but Wonder Woman and I aren't, so we're good. And Superman's like, this is really happening right now. And Batman's like, shut up, Clark. Elsewhere, Hal Jordan is uh, doing his best impression of Ray Palmer again. And he also has to listen to Locus talk on and on about them being lovers. Or Hal. She's worse than Star Sapphire. Justice League 3000 isn't really a Batman story, FYI. It's about the five heroes brought back to life 10 centuries from now, and the fun that happens when they interact with one another. So it's not the League that you know, it's quite the contrary. But it's hilarious. Okay, in a bit of a twist, uh, the prison planet turns out to be what's left of Earth, or rather, New York City. And Batman then learns that the League actually has a relative in this universe. A mother of sorts, kind of. Her name is Ariel Masters, and she comes back to Earth to meet her children, or kids, space kids. And then basically explains how, um, Batman, you guys aren't clones, but rather people who Cadmus murdered and then restructured their DNA to be the Justice League. And Batman's like, but I thought we were clones and we live because someone actually died for us? And the heroes can't really wrap their minds around that. And then the easiest way that I can explain it to you, the viewers, is think like Venom and Carnage from Spider-Man, except nothing of the human host remains after they, you know, take hold of you. 
So no going back to who you were afterwards, you know, once the Sonic stuff gets rid of Venom. And who you were is gone. So this actually really shocks Superman, and he's kind of like, so I'm really not Superman then. Either that or he was just upset that he couldn't call himself Superman anymore. But he gets over it. Everybody does, actually. You'd think this would be a crippling thing to destroy the League, but they're just kind of like, well, what's done is done. I mean, you'd think they'd be going, why? What have we done? We've murdered innocent people so that we could live. But now they're just kind of like, anybody want to go out for Chinese? And eh, I'm kind of hungry. I mean, this body's hungry. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Elsewhere, uh, Hal Jordan escapes the locust creature thing and flies into space where they fight. And his cloak, which I really didn't talk about before, uh, is destroyed by Locus, and uh, basically everybody thinks the cloak is what is the power for Hal Jordan's Green Lantern thing, but it isn't. But more on that in a little bit, because that's kind of fun to talk about. So back at the Cadmus lab, Barry Allen is brought back to life and meets Firestorm. Yep, the Wonder Twins are at it again, playing Dr. Frankenstein. Though Firestorm really doesn't want to join the team after being brought up to speed about, you know, hey, you're alive ten centuries later, and this is what's going on. This is what we need you for. Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman are captured on some prison planet, okay. Uh, Green Lantern is uh, missing in action after fighting a super baddie. Oh, and Barry Allen died fighting said super baddie, but it's okay. We brought him back to life. And Firestorm's just like, yeah, I don't really need to rush in and die. So, um, I think Barry's got this. I'm just gonna wait over here, you know, uh, folding my arms and looking cool. And the twins are not happy about this. They argue like preschoolers over blocks, and Barry says, if I die again, please don't bring me back. On Earth, or the polluted cesspool that is now Earth, Batman tries to save his mother, and then jokes with her while he's saving her. Is this Dick Grayson, Batman? No, this is Bruce Wayne. The universe just imploded on itself out of sheer what? She basically reminds Batman that he has no sense of humor. You do that, masters. Bruce is like, I read about the old me, you know, 10 centuries ago. I prefer how I am now, you know, with personality. So Clark and Wonder Woman aren't uh, faring too well against another member of the five, so think like a super baddie. And uh, while if they had their original bodies, maybe it would have been a different fight, they both struggle a little bit. If it wasn't for the Flash saving everybody in the blink of an eye, I would say they would all die. When Batman sees Barry again, instead of saying, Hey Barry, how you doing? Or it's great to see you alive again. He's like, when are they going to get your hair collar right? You were a blonde. And then Ariel Masters, who's like right next to him, and she's like, wait, how would you know that? And Batman's like, because I'm Batman. Somehow, Firestorm was dragged in all this zaniness by Barry Allen because he's very convincing, and he's almost killed that member of the five that uh, Superman and Wonder Woman were having issues with. That's all thanks to the Firestorm Matrix, kid. It's crazy powerful. Then that convert thing takes over Barry's spaceship because, as you know, Barry gets very nauseous with, you know, instant teleportation stuff or instant transmission for you DBZ fans and uh, basically turns Barry's awesome spaceship thing into, like, a Transformer from Michael Bay's film. And then they're getting ready to fight and he's like, mm, you know what, I'm just gonna transport all of you guys into my jail cell. Oh, and uh, by the way, Firestorm betrayed you guys and says he's not a member of your team, so He's gonna work for the five now if that's cool. So while Batman's in prison and all these other people are, like the rest of the league, Batman is trying to buy time by talking to this AI thing in kind of like this weird virtual world, uh, trying to find out what the convert wants. And then uh, Locus arrives on the planet with uh, what's left of a presumed dead Green Lantern and throws his remains at Aerial Master saying, you need to fix this defective little Green Lantern guy. What's interesting is Hal is actually playing possum, so he's pretending to be dead, and he tells Ariel that, uh, you know, I'm gonna get you all out, where's the Justice League? And she's like, wait a second, you're not using your green energy cloak. That's bad, that's keeping your power from becoming a cancer that will kill you. And Jordan's like, redhead say what? So apparently the green cloak that Hal Jordan had, it wasn't his power, he is the energy ring, but the energy is so pure that went out uh, that cloak to dampen, you know, what it does to Hal's body, it is gonna slowly kill him. But I have to say this, even in the 31st century, Hal Jordan is awesome. Even though he's this little tiny Adam guy, he blows up half of the prison planet and then knocks out Locust like it's nothing. So that's how amazing Hal Jordan is. I thought I would just uh, bring that up. 
So the League ends up going to a jungle planet after they escape, and they recharge their batteries. Um, and unfortunately, Jordan's reunion with his best friend is short-lived, and Barry dies instantly again. But this time, there's a little bit more explanation than somebody just looked at him and he blew up. This time, turns out that there are bombs inside the League's DNA as a means to control them in case they go rogue. Which is actually a good idea because the Justice League is some of the most powerful beings in the universe. But that aside, poor Barry. The mastermind behind everything is revealed, though I don't want to spoil it for all of you guys and gals, so you have to read it yourselves. Afterwards, Hal Jordan really kicks Superman's butt because of what just happened to Barry Allen. He doesn't want to hear Superman talk about how amazing Superman is. He's had enough, so he fights Superman. Uh, somehow they all end up back at Cadmus. Again, I'm not going to tell you how. And Lantern and Batman uh, devise a plan of escape to uh, get off this uh, Cadmus planet. Apparently, Bruce uh, also mentions how he knows how everybody died saving the world and doesn't want that to happen again. And Hal is like, you want to know something, Bruce? You got to man up. Even though we're not the original heroes that we used to be, we're still heroes, so we need to kick butt and we need to do it today. And Batman's like, that pep talk, it touched me. So he devises a plan to get everybody off the planet. Ariel Masters uh, then brings back the Flash, though it's a bit different this time around. This Flash is actually a girl with Barry's power. How that works, I really don't know. So Ariel tells the new Flash um, to go get the bad guy, the boss of the five. And uh, also, uh, Barry didn't want to come back, so now you have his powers and go get him, girl. So Batman and the new Flash uh, meet up with the rest of the team on their way off the planet. Uh, Locust returns and is super ticked, and she and Hal fight for the final time, and GL wipes the floor with her. Batman's kind of out of character here and suggests that they go back and blow up the metahuman DNA, which would be bad because all those people wouldn't be able to come back to life, but uh, he realizes that it's a major threat. So off-world, uh, mainly in the uh, Camelot planet, yes, there is a planet based after King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, of course, because this is a DC universe, why not? The Justice League uh, tricks the Five into following there for a final showdown. Uh, first, they actually port them to Etrigan's base, though, and have the Five face Etrigan and his uh, demon army, like Mortal Kombat style. And uh, after they deal with some of the hordes and they're kind of tired out, they lock on to Batman's location and they have to fight the Justice League, though they're a little bit tired after dealing with uh, Etrigan and his forces. Batman makes quick work of the convert, who's always been very chatty with Batman, saying things, uh, which is a five member, by the way. He's kind of like second in command. And the five guys are like, I'm going to enjoy beating you up. And Batman kicked the convert's butt in one panel. And that's how cool Batman is in the future. Hal easily defeats the girl who's obsessed with him, being, you know, part of the green energy has its benefits, folks. Wonder Woman, even though she can't stomach Clark's ego, uh, does team up with him to defeat Callie really badly, which is another member of the Five or whatever. They probably killed her, I don't know. Meanwhile, New Flash faces the Five's boss, or rather stalls him, until Wonder Woman comes to basically make him sorry for everything he did. And Superman and Batman are just like, this is gonna be fun to watch. Superman also reflects on how the League always wins no matter what, which Batman is like, you, you remember that time we were killed trying to save the world and Superman's like, I don't want to hear about that, dude. You are a bummer. Now, my thought is, I really don't know who killed the League. I still don't get it. I mean, who's responsible for destroying the entire Justice League? Lex Luthor? Darkseid? Brainiac? Joker robots? Or Doomsday? They don't really tell you. Anyway, after Deflator Mouse and his team beat the Five, they make a new HQ on Camelot 9's planet. Clark also develops a crush on the female Flash, and Batman remembers how to brood. Bruce also develops, like, a family relationship with Ariel Masters, and they chat a lot. She seems to know him really well, too, and since he has most of his memories back from the past, Bruce is able to kind of be a little bit different, so he sees this woman as family, and actually enjoys talking to her. Um, he doesn't like one of her remarks, though, as they're sitting under a tree near Camelot. She says, You're gonna love it here at this castle, Bruce, because after all, you did all your best work inside of a cave. And Bruce is just kind of like, Some things I can't escape. So, I mean, that was kind of cute, and also, you know, going back to the original Batman. Uh, Superman becomes the new Flash's teacher, and he also wants to see, for the final time, who is the fastest being alive. 
And I have to say, Clark's super speed can't even keep up with the female Flash. Actually, he sweats so much and nearly passes out after coming 30 seconds behind her. Hal then gives the new girl a pep talk, welcomes her to the league, and says how important it is for her to carry on the mantle of the Flash and to be the Flash in Barry's memory, saying how she has a lot to live up to and that she can be very heroic herself. And then he says, by the way, Clark, she's way faster than you, so just get over it. Barry held back, and she doesn't. So just so everybody knows, stuff gets really weird from this point on. Even weirder, if you can think about it. The Five makes a new army of metahumans, though led by Lois Lane of all people. Uh, she also has Bane, who's like an undead zombie corpse type thing. Mirror Master, Zeus, and Sinestro are all brought back to kill the League. Also on Earth, or that prison planet, what's left of it, Blue Beetle and Booster Gold from the pre-52 arrive. That's right, Ted Kord was never the Blue Beetle in the new 52, as far as I know. Either uh, worlds collided somehow after Convergence, or the writers said, screw it, Blue and Gold are back together again. And the readers are just gonna have to deal with it because it's amazing. And I will say this, the issue where Booster Gold and uh, Blue Beetle are back is hilarious because they accidentally uh, were at a friend's house, uh, Max Lord or whatever, and they fell asleep inside the cryogenic freezing thing in New York City, and when they woke up, it's 10 centuries later. So, yeah, it, it could be kind of like a Futurama thing if you think about it. All you need to know about these wacky pals is they cause trouble for what's left of Earth, and that's gonna be a problem. On Camelot, back on that planet, a new Flash is driving Aerial Masters nuts as they build the Justice League headquarters, and then Ariel tricks her to leave to go chat with Wonder Woman on the front lines. Lois Lane arrives on the planet and mentions in a little panel, which I still don't understand, that she is the one responsible for killing Superman and the League. How is that possible? So, which Lois Lane is this? I mean, sure, Lois Lane got Superman's power and all-star Superman for a little bit, but she died in the Injustice universe and it was her death that caused Superman to go nutsoid. She married Superman pre-52 and had his baby. So I don't really see why Lois would hate Superman. I mean, the new 52 Lois revealed his secret identity, but that's because she was jealous of Wonder Woman and Supes. So please fill in the gaps, DC, because I have no idea what's going on. Anyway, back to the Flash. Uh, she goes and pesters Wonder Woman, whatever. Wonder Woman's just like, get away from me, you're weird. The young girl really admires Diana and speeds off to the Ice Queen's lair, even though Diana tricks her to go scout using Barry's power. Because she says, we used to use Barry all the time, and the uh, uh, King Arthur soldier is like, what? Who's Barry? So Super Ego, aka Superman, is none too pleased about hearing that the youngest member of the Justice League is off on her lonesome. And uh, he leaps into action by literally jumping out the window saying, this is a job for Superman! Before Batman can, of course, remind Clark, you can't fly, moron. Uh, Superman's like, I'm okay! Someone broke my fall! Hey Bruce, this peasant is really bothering me and giving me the silent treatment. Also, I don't think he's breathing. And Batman just like face palms Captain Picard style. So, at the ice castle uh, on the front lines, Flash, the fastest woman alive, meets the Ice Queen, whom in reality is a former member of the Justice League International. Wait, wait, I'll be able to explain it, just hold on. Um, that was the same group that Blue Beetle and Booster Gold were a part of. I know this book is incredibly confusing, but it's hilarious. Anyway, Superman bursts in, gets frozen by the Ice Queen, and, uh, basically she hates him because he's not the same Superman anymore, and he has no manners. At all. Or tact. Not until Wonder Woman walks in that Ice actually remembers who the Justice League really is, and she's in shock to see everybody alive. She demands answers or else. Then the two women get into a, a chick fight, like, arguing-wise, on whether or not the Justice League International was a joke or not, which it kind of was, but you'd never really see Wonder Woman saying that. I mean, uh, she had a lot of class, and Wonder Woman 3000, not so much. She says what's on her mind. So Wonder Woman had the nerve to uh, say that to Ice, and then Ice orders everybody to leave her castle. Superman comes to and makes things a lot worse, but Ice is like... You know, I lived a really long time ago, so it's nice to see you guys, but I don't understand how you could be alive because I watched you all die, and then Superman's like, I don't want to hear the details! And then when Superman's like, I do want to know something though, how is she still alive? And everybody just kind of face palms because Superman apparently forgot that Ice is an immortal. 
So, New Flash then leads the Ice Princess back to the Justice League castle, and Bruce is like, how are you still alive? And then everybody in the room face palms, saying she's immortal, hello! Ice then tells Batman it's good to see him again, and they used to be teammates on the Justice League International, and Bruce is like, oh yeah, I was part of that team too, which Superman and Wonder Woman bust out laughing, and Lantern's like, hey, show some respect, Bat's team did pretty well, although they were pretty bad too. And uh, you could actually get a reference of Batman Brave and the Bold, Justice League International. Although when Aquaman was on the team, it wasn't too bad. So, you know, she's reminiscing with Batman and stuff like that, and he gets her to describe the final battle that JLI faced, and what happened to Beatrice, or Fire. And Ice is actually impressed that Batman remembers any of those League members, and he blushes, and he's like, well, I kind of remember some people. And it's like, Batman just blushed, does he like this immortal Ice Queen? Is it reminding him of somebody, maybe Talia? Batman is the only one of the League that remembers the past, by the way, folks. Well, I mean, he remembers bits and pieces, like a shattered mirror, whereas Wonder Woman and Superman everybody else are just kind of, what? So, yeah, Batman just fills people in about the past. Anyway, she recalls that the Super Buddies fought some thing, and uh, Fire got taken hostage by Etrigan in Hades. Not sure how, though. The, the panels go by really fast so that I don't really understand what's going on. Uh, Ice then quits the league, turns her back on her friends, and then goes sleep in a uh, Cadmus frozen chamber la lab for like 100 years or something like that. Then the Earth is destroyed, and we still don't know how that happens, but 100 years later, so during Terry McGinnis' run as Batman, is when the world just suddenly implodes or whatever. Anyway, Ice uh, then goes back to sleep again, this time for probably 200 years, they don't really say. Next time she wakes up, the Atomic Knights are basically the rulers of the Earth. And when I think Atomic Knights, somehow I can't stop thinking about Ben 10. So she destroys the Atomic Knights and becomes Earth's ruler for a very long time. She then uh, rounds up her people to save them from war and tells Batman that she constructed two arcs and jettisoned into space and left the planet with her people and brought them to a new planet that uh, they could live on. And then as a means of solace and penance, or the type, type of stuff she did to rule humanity for a couple centuries. She locked herself into a castle that she built and went into an ice coma or whatever. But unknown to her, Etrigan actually followed her to Camelot and he's been waging war ever since. Bruce gets really mad and accuses Ice of lying about something and he can't really put his finger on it, but he's not happy. And uh, then he's like, okay, so why did Etrigan challenge you? What, what's going on with that? and she uh, takes off her coat and reveals like this massive scar left by Etrigan and fire. And then Batman's just like, it's really hard for me to believe that my once friend is now the leader of Hades forces. And she replies with the Justice League, as you know it, Bruce is dead. And uh, I guess you could say that time changes people. I mean, centuries change people, I guess. So if you knew somebody, a hundred years from now, they would be totally different if, you know, they weren't a zombie. Oh, and uh, just so you know, Darkseid is still alive, and he's a talking head. He's like Etrigan's advisor or something like that. So he could possibly be the guy who corrupted Merlin's agent. So Etrigan, sitting on his, like, bone throne, you know, like Game of Thrones style or whatever, he sends Fire to go battle Ice. Then uh, Fire and Ice have a fake fight, and then they make up and they're BFFs again. So it's incredibly rushed. And I don't really understand it, but that's what the, the writers did. It's like, we're not going to have these two best friends fight. Lois then invades the Justice League castle and possibly kills Ariel, and then it ends. That, that was the last issue. That was 15 issues. You're welcome. So uh, everything supposedly continued in something called Justice League 3000 Rebirth. But guess what? There is no rebirth issue. The new Justice League issue that started this summer is called Justice League 3001 that does another time skip of like one year. And all that stuff with Etrigan and his demons and Darkseid's head. Uh, nothing. Nothing happens. Also, Guy Gardner, one of my least favorite Green Lanterns, is back. He replaces Hal Jordan, but he's a she now. Because guess what? At Cadmus, they couldn't find a male candidate to be Guy. And you know what? I don't blame them, actually. Who would want to be Guy? It's like the worst fate any human could suffer. 
So Superman and the new Flash are also dating now instead of just that banter where he, you know, was kind of like saying, I date you, but not really. They're officially an item. Batman is getting smarter and a little suspicious of the league, just like classic Batman. And Firestorm is now the leader of Cadmus. Oh, and uh, Fire and Ice, they recreate the uh, Super Buddies and they're searching for Booster Gold and Blue Beetle so that they can save the Earth. But in reality, if those two idiots get together and they're in charge of a Justice League, humanity as we know it will be doomed. But anyway, that does it for this lore. Hopefully some of you learned something. I don't know. It's so confusing, but this is the main purpose of the books, okay? The main purpose of the books are to get you to laugh. They're not consistent with anything. There's a storyline there somewhere, but mostly it's just gut-busting fun. As soon as Ted Cord and Booster Gold got into the series, you know that there's just, there's no continuity. There's nothing. Whatever the writers can do to make you laugh, they're going to throw it in. Just like Justice League 3001, they brought um, Supergirl, who died in um, pre-crisis or whatever. They bring her back to life, and she's in this, like, Kryptonian pod, and she just shows up. And it's like, what? So, yeah, I just read the books for fun. They're funny. I find them hilarious. They're some of the best uh, dialogue in the New 52 or New DC, whatever you want to call it. But uh, it's still very confusing, so don't try to do a timeline at all. But uh, I really couldn't think of any good puns at all to do for this. But I hope you enjoyed the Justice League 3000 skin. It's pretty cool. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, feel free to suggest the next skin or lore in the comments below. Uh, I've gotten some uh, requests for Hush and other things. So let me know what you want to see. Until next time, God bless and happy gaming. And I'll see you with more Batman Arkham Knight very soon. <laughs>